Uh, Johnny, I'm so excited to talk about this. All yeah, right, great. so so for you knights who are doing this old school and listening, it's going to be a little hard, but for our YouTube followers, right, Jay? Yeah. I have my, uh, my uh, water flask, and it's popular to put stickers on them, right? Correct. I have like Tina, Nightwing, Boba, of a Justice League, not really. I have a DC, Rick and Morty. Anyway, so I have a Nightwing here, which you and I are a fan of Nightwing. And my uh, friend at the gym, she knows Marvel better than you and me combined. And she saw my Nightwing sticker and she goes, and it looks very cartoonish, the one I have. And she goes, oh, uh, Teen Titans, right? And I didn't know how to accurately answer that. I'm like, yes, no, yes. I mean, no. <laughs> How much time do you have? Yeah, honestly, I'm, I sat her down and I was like, <sighs> take a deep breath. I'm like, how far are you into your workout? This is going to be a minute. <laughs> and she was like, only a nerd. And I'm like, yep, only a nerd. Uh, I thought that was cool. Jason Todd. No, no, no. Uh, it's not Jason Todd. It's um, Nightwing is uh, Dick Grayson. Dick Grayson. That's right. Thank you. Sorry. Todd became. I knew that, I knew that but I was like, no, no. D Todd's the Red Hood. Yeah, he became the Red Hood who there was a universe where he killed Nightwing and then in his honor, he was the red one where he became red Nightwing, but that's new 52 didn't explore it. And just was like, just, Hey, he's red. Yeah. Anyway, I got both versions just to have right but behind me somewhere, somewhere in my nerd wall. I have him. Dick Grayson is 100% the best Robin, like far and out. Whoa. He's just Batman. Who's not a grumpy Batman. Like he's just the same story. Except he doesn't have money, but he grew up with money because he had got adopted, so he had money. He went right. to the right schooling. He just wasn't a baby. Dude, and so this is kind of us. We like these ones that are like Batman, but off-brand. Like, I love Batman Beyond, favorite Batman. And you love uh, Nightwing, favorite Batman. Like, of the Bat family, those are our favorite. Well, technically, I think he. there's that huge debate of who becomes Batman after he retires. And everyone says Dick Grayson should take it. But I'm like, Nightwing's his own hero. He's, like, he's his yeah. own certified guy like he's he's no batman don't get me wrong he's, he's not the leader of the justice league but he was the leader of the titans right and batman beyond is just kind of a cool off-brand thing that i've fallen in love with anyway hey so to our listeners who are on youtube as well you can see this beautiful justice league um what do you Batman? Batman? yeah but do they call it something because it's so dude this thing is heavy anyway we're going to be giving this away um so check out our details in the description on how to win it right johnny dude it's so sick and uh the last fan who won it she's awesome always dms us so we love giving away stuff to our loyal knights what was cool is it's, it was someone who uh we found on instagram and now is following us and is totally in the in the know but it's not like it wasn't one of our friends or it wasn't someone that we met at a convention or anything like that it was someone that we just met you know as a stranger who participated and now like they love it loyal knight and that's how we want to grow we want to we don't care how we meet you or how you find us as long as you find us and we meet you right does that work that's how it works <laughs> dude but and, uh, also to you viewers we're also wearing uh proper shirts this time right yeah i was telling johnny i'm like superman under a red sun because i look very sickly uh this blue dude, so sickly room. i like, have like bags under my eyes and yeah, you know, like me, I have my stage lights and they're set to the warm, so I look tanner than I really am. I still have the winter pasty, sickly look, but no one can tell. Yeah, apparently they can for me. I, 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 I turned on the camera and I was like, "Is that really how I look?" Oh, <laughs> oh. <my> gosh! <laughs> you should have stick to only podcasting, like our mothers told us. But we're like, no, we're gonna venture off to YouTube. <laughs> but we should talk about Justice League. Justice League, the the 2017 one, the one that we loved. Yeah. And at the end of the video, we will tell you as well how to win this. Um, so stay tuned and listen to our review. But yeah, let's 27. Wait, hold on. What? <laughs> <laughs> that took you a minute. Yeah, it did. It was scary, Johnny. <laughs> uh, this is Green Lantern all over again. Justice League. I, I would say I like the Green Lantern movie more than I like Justice League. <laughs> and that's... Well, Before or after the Schneider cut. <laughs> Um, so everyone's heard the backstory, right? But do you want to give us a quick, quick, like 411 on what kind of happened? Um, yeah, Schneider had a tragedy in his life that prevented him from doing it. And then the studios who normally do do this. I mean, it's not like a director always has a hundred percent control on something. The studios let him 
be like, all right, you're done. We'll just grab Wheaton, who was in the MCU, Josh Wheaton. He took over and then, but he tried to put MCU love into a DC movie and it just didn't work. Stop quipping. <laughs> yeah. And I, what was really cool about the Justice League Schneider cut was everything was just his, right? Not, he didn't want to use one inch of Wheaton. And don't get me wrong. Like, it's not like he was mad at Wheaton. He's just like, hey, this is my cut. Right. And, and what was cool too is because it was going on HBO Max, there was like, from what I've heard, there was like hardly any studio involvement, meaning that they were like, hey, we just want you to do your vision because this isn't going to be canonical or whatever. So go for it. Little did they know that <laughs> what would happen, that it would have as high of a rating as Infinity War, at least for a time it did. And like one of the highest ranked uh, or highest rated IMDb films of all time. It holds, I think it's tied for the top three. Dark Knight is the highest. And then I think Infinity War and Justice League now, Snyder's Cut. So it's also great cool. too, because it, it's like a, once something successful like this happens, it'll open the doors. Like, do you remember the fantastic lame that dropped like three or four years ago? The director was like, this is not my work before it even released. He was just like, this is horrible before it was even dropped. And so imagine like, everyone's like, I want, no one like fought to see his cut, right. but at least like a studio could be like, you know what? We paid just as much money. They gave him just as much money to finish this as they did to reshoot everything. And it's still making way more money than it would normally. I mean, I don't know how they do online streaming views but at least it made fans happy at the but end of the day Squad is one where they're saying they want the david david eicher david a or something like that david they want david's cut the director's cut for suicide squad i mean if they keep that joker i'm the way he turned out but they probably won't i know the, jo the joker in this justice league was like a thousand times better than the one that we got in suicide squad uh, so much better and he was hardly in it and he stole the scenes i know it was when, just oh uh, uh, all right uh uh, uh. So let's do this. As we as we do our review, the movie's been out long enough that you need to have just seen it. We're gonna do spoils, very spoiler heavy. If you want to see a spoiler free review, there's one up on YouTube that I quickly put on uh, with Johnny's consent. <laughs> 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 that sounds right. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. <laughs> anyway, uh, so. Go and check that out if you want a spoiler free review. But let's do a spoiler review, Johnny. And how do you want to do this? Let's just the only way you and me can stay on track is if we GBM the crap out of it. All right, let's do we'll it. Do let's the good. Ready. Oh, you want to do that? Okay. Yeah. We'll do the good, the bad, and the nerdy. The nerdy. Nerdy. <laughs> nerdy. Which is 99% of our reviews are all nerdy, anyways. I know. <laughs> it's so bad. Uh, okay. Um, why don't you start us off with the good? Cool. So there's a lot of good and it always ties into nerdy, but what I thought was super good and it gave me goosebumps was, and I'll start it a little chronologically, uh, the Amazon, the Amazonian chicks, the, the, their, their scene. Cause the original one was like, um, what is it? Uh, what's his name? Wolfbane. Oh, why am I drawing a, Steppenwolf. what? Steppenwolf. Steppenwolf. Yeah. He comes in and destroys. And then it didn't make sense. I'm like, how are they not getting out? This seems so dumb. But anyways, they were just so fierce in this one. Like my, I, I literally got goosebumps when they were like, Amazons, tell them what you fear. And they go, nothing. It gave you like 300 vibes, which, you know, he was a part of since Snyder was a part of. So he understands how Romans or that mythology works. And I was like, thank you. That was just really cool. I thought that was really good. Dude. I love, uh, I'm going to swear. So I love uh, badass good girls though. It's like, they're so sick. You know what I mean? Yeah, it was, and it was, it's cool to see too, how, um, like a lot of it, how much he changed. Uh, cause it, cause in my head, I'm like, how much did he really change? Right. And obviously he had, no, Snyder had the, the, the foresight, the hindsight of being like, okay, this is what the fans wanted to see. A lot of directors don't once it's done, it's done. So he had a little bit of a blueprint to see how can I fix this? You know, cause he did have money. He had time. He could fix some things. So it was cool to see like how, the, Am the Amazonians that fell down the cliff really died. Like you, the, you can see how sad they were. Oh, uh, like leaving behind. You can tell that. that. Force, I was like, Phew. you're right. Oh, he was a reckless force. So much better than the one in uh, Justice League. Like when he threw that horse, I literally went, oh, and mm -hmm. made an like I made a visceral noise because it was just like it's something you don't see in film. Like way to make the dude look like a bad guy, right? A little horse that gets thrown forget the amazons i felt bad for that horse 
they're warriors. He was just taking it out. He just wanted to. Yeah, he just wanted a sugar cube at the end of the day, or a carrot. You don't know what they do. An apple, maybe. Hmm, all the above, dude. Uh, and then when he's got the arrows in him, and they're like pulling him, and they're also almost getting him, and then he just breaks them out of himself. Like he breaks the arrows out of his butt. His design is so much better. Is this Steppenwolf? It really is, isn't it? He the arrows, and then he he like like a porcupine sprints them out of themselves. Um, there were just a few scenes like that where he's just brutal. Like he decapitates one of the Amazons at one point. And I was like, oh, like it just, I loved, okay, this is terrible. I love R-rated, um, I love R-rated superhero movies if the R rating is for like blood, violence, and language. I don't always love it if it gets super- um, Raunchy? Yeah. Like if, if they're trying too hard or if they're getting too, like- uh, Kick ass. Game of Thrones, the first couple seasons where we're oh, like, oh, they kick ass too is like all the jokes were very raunchy and repetitive and they weren't very funny. But like, if you want to have added stakes, a good way to do it is to have people who you care about die. And I cared about the Amazons and they were dying. Yeah. So. There was a, uh, you showed fear and, uh, and it was, which is weird because Whedon's really good at like showing that these uh, superhumans are human. Like, so they die. Right. But, I don't know what was going on there, man. It's, it's is when you have too many cooks in the kitchen. I, I have a hard time judging Joss Whedon on that. Yeah, I, I give him a pass only because we got what we wanted. Right. All right, Birdman, what's your good? Uh, I would say my good, I really liked, and this is almost nerdy, but I'm going to go good. I really liked Cyborg's um, backstory they added. And what I mean by that is there's a sequence where he's listening to a recording from his father before he breaks the tape recorder where his father talks about like how all the firewalls in the world will be like play things to you. Mm. And the hard part will be not doing things. And it was kind of an interesting like take on Cyborg because you don't really think about that superpower with him at all. Like you yeah. see a little bit in Ultron, but Ultron is, you know, being fenced around by Jarvis. And so, the, you know, you don't really see it to that degree where he has no opposition. He could rule the world. Mm -hmm. Or at least mess it up by the banks and the stock okay. market. And... Yeah, and he, and he could rewrite it however he wanted to. And so it's it's interesting, like, what would you do in that position? And it was cool that he had his moment where he helped someone. And maybe he does that a lot more. You know, maybe he's going to rebalance the scales without completely sending the world into total chaos and shock. But I uh, I uh, really enjoyed that. <laughs> yeah, he didn't do that once, though, which that's more of a fan of Teen Titans, which make it sad. But I get it. Well, and it was cool too when like he's talking about like the nuclear codes. He could end the world right then because there's no Superman to stop. Wow. Yeah. You know what I mean? And he was just like that whole dream sequence he had was really cool. And man, what's his I know his last name's Fisher. Um Mr. Fisher, the guy who plays Cyborg, is incredible. He acted so well and he got shafted so hard on Joss Whedon's. I see why he was freaking out because he did such a good job. So that's my good, like really good element to put into the story. Really good. Yeah cyborg in previous renditions have been like a happy go lucky guy but you're like who wants to be like this he, he's not mortal anymore like he's not a human he, only his head is human right he's unstoppable but it still sucks and in the teen titans like he was kind of goofy or whatever but it's a kid's show but when there were more serious moments a lot of times i thought it did come from cyborg like he could kind of be a voice of reason or there's an episode where he goes back in time in the old teen titans and he's very reserved and he cares about these people a lot and and he's 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 more genuine than that so it was kind of fun i think i think that you could have a lot of fun with cyborg and, and show that character arc from kind of a moody person who's unhappy with who he is to someone who's really happy with their life and makes a huge difference there's a lot you could do with it there's a lot they did really well with a lot of stuff like that i mean i can go i have like 19 nerdy things so we can go to bad because for me good is just good you have maybe we can do one other good. Do you have any other, or should we just jump to bad? I mean, I got a lot of good, but they're all intertwined with nerdy, so it's up to you. Uh, let me see. I, I wanted you maybe do one more, and I wanted to get your input on it. Here, here's another good. I'll just do it really quick. Um, the I love, love, love the Wonder Woman. She has her own theme song, right? Mm -hmm. And a lot of times in the original, the your Josh Whedon version, it would play every second she'd show up, but uh snatter did a little different like he played it a little but then he also added a little more drums he didn't do it just her like wonder woman style so i like that he, he gave it a little more of a uniqueness to it where it's like this is justice league it's not a wonder woman movie but he played it enough they're like okay i recognize it it's such a good intro her music like she has her own music and wonder woman is so cool and she was so good in this she was so good in this 
the bank heist scene, which we'll get into in Nerdy. Oh my goodness. But um, my good, kind of stepping off with that, um, there's this scene where Superman's resurrected and um, you see him floating in the air and you see Lois's face as she sees him. And I, a lot of people said they didn't like Lois Lane in this movie. Uh, I actually did. I, I realized that the director didn't do a whole lot with her. She just kind of moped around. I get that. But I liked that you kind of got to see a very human reaction to what it would be like to have to carry a secret of like, not only did you lose your significant other who you were engaged to, but you also lost Superman, but you also lost, you also can't tell anyone about it. Mm -hmm. So it's just, she's kind of in this really hard spot and she hasn't been working or anything else. And I liked that, even though I get that he's not doing a whole lot with Lois Lane, I liked having kind of a very human character like that, where she just kind of gave up. And so for me, it was really cool to see her depressed. And then the, the contrast of that, when she sees Superman flying, like her hope and everything else, it's like, and that, that image, you know what I'm talking about? When Superman first gets resurrected, he's just floating in the air, like shirtless, mm -hmm. just sitting up there. Yeah. I thought that imagery was so cool. There was something about that where I was just like, whoa, that shot is beautiful. And correct me here, but in the, in the Whedon version, like Batman calls her in as a backup and all this. And then, and then, and like, but the way that Schneider has it is it's, she's already there for someone else. Like, it's not like a, my ace in the hole. Like, right. She's already doing it. So I like that a lot. Like it made more sense. Like I kind of get where he was coming from, but I'm like, Batman really, would he have her? In the... I don't know. I just liked it more. I need to bring in the heavy guns. I mean, yeah. Something like that. And in, in this one, she's just there because she misses Superman and she's prowling around and she's trying to say goodbye. I like that too. I agree with you. You're right. She is humanized way more than normal, which is perfect. You need, you need, it was a good balance. Yeah. Because no one else really has significant others at the time. So it's good to be like, oh. Speaking of significant others, what did you think of Wonder Bat? Did you see when Wonder Woman walks in and he's working on the plane? Well, I was going to get into that a little bit. How, I guess I can go either nerdy or good. So you and me, we're stands of, we don't get me wrong, we love Catwoman and Batman, but we're huge stands. I'm going to use uh, words here, nerd words, of uh, Batman and uh, Wonder Woman, Wonder Bat. And so it was funny to see the, the two perspectives, like, uh, the 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 Whedon one it's like oh he was like moping around in there and she went and consoled him and then like they're little tiny and then uh, Snyder just had him like kind of touch hands like the little hints they both did was really interesting to me so, I, I feel like we got just as much in both of them just like interest yeah, Batman was kind of a, a jerk in a in in the Justice League version like at one point she says something about how she lost one and he's like oh you mean at some point he throws the name at her of uh oh the pilot yeah crap i just had his name in my head and I'm, i lost it steve steve i don't remember his last name it's not rogers but it's steve yeah anyway you mean he goes you mean like steve and then she like throws him into a bunch of crates do you remember this is this in the justice league the yeah Earth Anyway, he, Batman is just kind of a jerk to her. In this one, he's always nice. And I just like when she first shows up and he's like, that's a million dollar security. Yeah, system. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Casually, like, <laughs> and then uh, what does he say? He says something like, uh, hi. All the, <laughs> I, just the whole. It's, and it's better too, because in the, in the 2017 version, uh, Alfred's like, did you call Diana yet? Like a little, like a little puppy boy. He doesn't even do it this time. So it's, it was oh, a cool introspective. In this one. I, I really like Alfred and Batman in this version. It, I mean, it might be, well, Michael Caine and um, Christian Bell were awesome too. Yeah, uh, this, this, uh, this, uh, oh, I mean, I know you loved him more in Aragon, but he was really good as Alfred. <laughs> I had to drop that in there. I had to drop that in there. <laughs> no, I was, it, cause he was like, he's the right amount of worried about a son, cause, you know, Bruce is his son, but enough to be like, you know, he's a grown man. I can only do so much for him. Right. And, and you can see the history in there, how they talk. It's an established history. It's cool. Mm -hmm. That's, yeah, we should do bad because we're starting to fringe into nerdy. Which we always do. Um, I am wearing, for you listeners, I am wearing my uh, Central City Runners Club, my Flash shirt. And I do have a little uh, Flash mini. So I am a fan of the Flash and I've complained about the Flash. And I'll get into some nerdy a lot better. But even though not everyone agrees with me, I thought that, and I was mad it was a, a Schneider line, the one where Batman meets him and he goes, oh, do you want to join us? Yeah, that was easy. I don't have a lot of friends. That to me is just so stupid. I'm sorry. At me all you want. I just don't want uh, the Flash to be this little needy kid in my eyes. So that was one of my bads. There wasn't too many, but that was a big bad for me. Like out of all the lines, that was your line? 
Yeah. I need friends. Friends, yeah. And I was like, and they did proper, I'll well, go into nerdy, they did him a lot better because that was one of my biggest pet peeves was him. But this time, like, he was just so... Whippy in the other one. It's like a cave. A pet cave. Yeah. Like, it was... like and they're kind of funny, but it's like, the Flash shouldn't be quippy. He's not quippy. Yeah, and I and I understood how they wanted to do that. Like another bad, well, I guess this is they didn't keep it. It was the one I kind of liked uh, when uh, Aquaman was sitting on. This is so in the the twenty seventeen cut. He was sitting on the the lasso of truth, and he starts going off. And then they're like, "Oh, so that wasn't Schneider." So I kind of like that one, but I understand that's not going to be there. So his his uh, claim to fame was. He had another funny scene, which I'll go into nerdy with him and uh, him and Barry, which I like a lot. Which I can see that being a very good, a very good uh, moment. <laughs> a duo, like how you and me always want Aquaman and uh, Shazam to buddy cop. I kind of want Aquaman and Barry. Dude, I would be so stoked if uh, Aquaman and Shazam teamed up for Black Adam. That would be so sick. Dude, or just just bring him in the Justice League. He is part of the Justice League. This is good hope. But that was my bad. That little dorky line. I need friends. Yeah, we all need friends, Barry. Sorry. I uh, I really like. So no, this is actually where I'm bad. Um, yeah, I was gonna say, figure it out. I'm bad. You're soft serve there, bud. No, the uh, there are a few scenes where um, Steppenwolf is having Skype calls with like the, I don't know, the Secretary of Dark Side. I don't know his name, but he'll repeat the same stuff over and over again. They're all sniffing out the mother boxes. It happens like three times. And it's like, dude, you said this 30 minutes ago. <laughs> we know what they're doing. Stop updating us. No more Skype calls. Like that was <laughs> bad. So it was just like verbatim. He said it in two parts that were almost exactly the same. Yeah. That's funny. I didn't even <laughs> notice that. That's how bad it was. I didn't even notice it. They're sniffing. The smell of the other mother box is upon them. And they're sniffing it out. The parademons. So, did you think the four hours were bad? No, I enjoyed it. Oh, thank you, me too. Everyone is like, it's too long for a movie. I'm like, yeah, but you can binge watch a whole series in a sitting, but a four-hour movie, that's you don't have to watch it all in one sitting. Right. Did you have any other bads? Um, You know, not. I might call back to one, but I don't think I really did. That was just that line really got to me, and I was like, I hope it's not in the new cut, and it was, just because right. I just love Barry so much. But they did him justice. He's much better. So kind of stepping into that, there were a few parts of CGI that weren't totally fleshed out. That would be my only other bad. Like I, there were a few times where it looked a little cartoony and I get it. They didn't want to drop another 50 million to finish those up VFX completely, totally. They just wanted it to be passable, which it is. It's fine. But it, it, uh, you know me, I'm kind of a stickler on CGI. I want to see practical effects or I want to see Thanos. That's about it. Your mm -hmm. CGI needs to be that good if you're going to have it. So there were a few moments like that, but not very many. Um, that being said, one of the coolest scenes going into, can I jump into a nerdy? Please. So one of the coolest scenes is CGI that had like one moment of kind of goofiness, but like it was probably one of my favorite scenes of the film. And it's when, um, shoot, what's Barry Allen's uh, significant other's name? Iris West. Oh, yeah. Iris. So Iris gets in the, uh, I Iris West. Yeah. She no, gets well, yeah. Well, yeah, West, you're right. Cause it's Allen. Yeah. Iris West. Okay, so Iris gets in a car accident though, yeah. and Bruce like instantly like breaks out of his Barry. sneakers. Very holy cow! <laughs> Barry breaks out of his sneakers. I love the just that whole scene. So like how they like and he he just touches the glass and it breaks. Right. Yeah, and then he walks over to her. And I love how gently he has to touch her because it. Mm -hmm. If you've seen um, Bad Boys, the boys, the boys, the boys. Mm -hmm. you've seen the speedster run through someone. <laughs> So it was cool to see them like kind of almost acknowledge that like if you're moving that fast, he needs to be so delicate to where he's like, he's like barely touching her like mm -hmm. with, his, with his bare fingertips because he knows how fast he's going. Yeah, it's realistic how like they're saying in physics, Barry has to like slow down before he stops because if he was to stop as fast as he's going, he would obliterate himself. Yeah. So it's one of those things you're like, I want this to be fantasy, but wait, this is science fiction. All right, we'll have some fiction to it. Yeah um no i actually like that so going back to that scene that's well, a little nerdy is they finally gave you the correct humor of barry right like he's humorous he's supposed to be he's the nerdy one he's supposed to be nerdy and he was like oh yeah like he came late to a <laughs> ironically late to an interview yeah and then he's I hanging know. out puppies that showed a great sign of him yeah 
and then he took like the the bus like oh the bus missed his stop i mean he's probably doing something else but it was a very it was a great intro for him because he didn't have a proper movie before to introduce him like some of the marvel people did he right. just he didn't have an origin story he just was like oh here this is me i i need a job yeah i will say um there's a moment that i I, uh, one other moment that was kind of a bad where he's talking to his dad i liked the whole interchange with his dad but at one point his dad says maybe you should stop visiting me and barry goes don't ever say that to me again and he says it in like the goofiest voice i don't know there was something about it that just like pulled me out of the movie i was like that was a that was a weird voice man <laughs> Dude, his whole interaction with his dad his dad talked like he was from the 80s he went like yeah man you got to do this dude and yeah. i was like what father talk because he's been in in jail since the 90s yeah but he's also a doctor like i don't he shouldn't talk like that he should talk like an it should be an educated man well not only that too he should be like i don't know maybe because we've had this scene of uh the cw had the first two seasons it was the he was the doctor there so we've already had a taste of this at least 40 percent of the fans have seen that barry that this universe is barry the same concept talking to a dad in jail right so he's not like, no, bro, you got to do this, dude. Like a surfer guy, like listening to the Red Hot Chili Peppers before it comes out. That one took me out of it for a minute. And I was like, ah. Uh. Okay, cool. I'm glad I'm not the only one who kind of thought that that whole sequence should have been fleshed out a little bit more. Like, yeah. Like they could have, there was there was something a little off to it. Mm -hmm. The writing, they kind of like snooze and be like, yeah, just do whatever you want. All right, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Hey man, you gotta forget <laughs> about me in here, bro. Yeah, seriously. You're not off on that. <laughs> cool. Don't ever say that to me again. Just <laughs> like, like mm, there was something off yeah. for me. But so for a full four hour movie to have the what three bads you came up with, that's pretty significant. No, it was yeah, it wasn't as uh incredible movie bad at all. And this is just kind of nitpicking bad. Like it's nothing that really nitpicky, guys. Like and it's and not everyone agrees with us because like if i say something bad most people are like yeah it's totally bad and i get thrashed on like no i like that he said he didn't have friends dude uh, our master shows this we both complained about that sequence and she was like no <laughs> <laughs> uh, never anger the master of strength learned aka one of the amazons um uh but no yeah so there's oh man i lost my train of thought not on a cast you ought this out right i hate you <laughs> running joke where johnny was going to say you'll edit this out and i never do no and i i tell him not to say it <laughs> and i say it anyways <laughs> uh oh i, I really hear a, a quick uh it's made me laugh out loud and it's kind of a throwaway scene and you know i love like throwaway scenes like Shit's creek has a ton of throwaway scenes where they're just like these little tiny banter things that make no sense right uh right when they're about to break in to where the alien ship is uh, did you catch Barry and Aquaman talking? And he's like, should I put the hat on or hat off? And they had like this 30 second interaction, which I thought was gold. It was so funny. Like, dude. Cause he was like, not lighthearted Aquaman, but he was kind of like, all right, I'll be nice to this little dude. But at the same time, like goofy with him. Yeah. But then still kind of a, like, like Aquaman. I'm like, I don't know, put this on. I don't know. And I'm like, I wanted more of that. I really did like that. I thought they were hilarious together. Dude, they really did play off each other really well. There was another scene where like Barry is running full speed at Superman and Superman just casually dodges him. Uh, and Barry collides with Aquaman and they get, both get thrown into the steps. And uh, it's become a meme, but Aquaman stares at Barry like and points. And it was so well done. It was unspoken. I love unspoken moments. Yeah, kind of like... All right, that's one. I'm going to get you next time. Yeah, exactly. There was so much said without actually being said. It was amazing. Yeah, it's a cool dynamic with it. Oh, I just remembered a bad. I'm going to go back because this was so bad. And it was a bad that the MCU did. What was up with Mira's accent? Oh, I know. <laughs> right? I was confused. And I'm like, wait, did she have one all along? And then this is I didn't mind the accent. You're the, the bloodbender. Yeah, right? I, I did not mind it. And then all of a nowhere, I was like, wait a minute. She didn't have this in uh, Aquaman. Like, what's, uh, what are they doing? Yeah, the accent was bad. I went through all this tried and through his heart. <laughs> I was yeah, like, and I was like, that's cool. But wait, how did you, <laughs> what I, happened? <laughs> uh, that's what happens when you don't have an exec in charge. That's really good. And even Marvel did it with Wanda. Although they, that's what I'm saying. They tried to retcon it with WandaVision that she's just going back and forth for fun or whatever. I don't know. Man. I mean, D, that I, I, I truly, 
truly hope DCEU learns from uh, the MCU and be like, hey, we have our own platform. The HBO Max and does their own, you know, shows like phase four or five. Just in the future. It's there. Figure it out. Restore the Snyderverse. I, I, it, you know what? I was worried because I, w- I liked Batman versus Superman, but I was like, eh, I don't think Snyder should take over as much. But you know what? After what he did for this cut, I'm like, okay, give him back the reins. 100 percent i the more as i watched this one the more i realized okay they the studio was getting involved with all these other films to heavy Mm -hmm. i think i can see the footprints of the studio and man of steel gets like it's it's weirdly um like like um dividing like a dividing movie like bipolar for some people like whatever what do you call that polarized it's polarizing I think Man of Steel is incredible. I rewatched it this year and I was like, this movie rocks. And I love Superman. Henry Cavill is Superman. Are you kidding? Oh, that's a hands down Superman. That's oh a Superman. Oh gosh. Yeah, there's my nerdy. When he comes out in that black suit. That's what I was going to say, that black, right? Man, dude, every scene Superman was in, I lost it. I was like, this I, this is my Superman. Come here. I, and I like Christopher Reeve and I like the guy who's on Team Wolf and the CW. And I like- uh, There's Sm- also the- the one who's in, uh, he was on Chuck too. Oh, I forgot his name. Uh, oh, he's yeah. On, uh, he's on these. Superman. He's, uh, he's on uh, Legends of. Is it Superman Returns or a different one? Um, yeah, it's the one that dropped in like 05. Um, he's on the, the CW show. Uh, on... Legends of the Galaxy. Yeah. Leg- Legends of the Galaxy? No. <laughs> uh, crap. Man, this is why we need to hire more than just Guillermo. I know he's in the back room doing who knows what. Yeah, and he'll never be on camera. Why? <laughs> podcasters only, Guillermo. Yeah, podcasters only. No. Um. Anyway, he's he 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 looks just like Legends of Tomorrow. Oh, that sucked. Anyway, that Superman. He looks, you know, he looks just like him. Don't get me wrong, but just not as good as an actor. Uh, Brandon Roth. That's what he is. Uh, he plays Adam on there, and he looks just like Superman. Don't get me wrong, aesthetically perfect. His acting's never been great, but. He's okay. He, he's passable. And yeah, Superman but Cavell, get me wrong, man. Like, Dude, unreal. And he has the right amount of like Clark's positive, but like Superman's like, I'm a kind of above everyone because I know what I am, right? Dude, when, he, when his mom showed up and he gave her a hug, I almost started crying. Like, Dude, that was just super sad. Like, mom, I'm bad. Or, uh, what is he? What are the, the lines nice too? It's like, yeah, ma, it's me. Is that what he yeah. says? Yeah, but he calls her... Mima or something. It's Mima. <laughs> uh, yeah. You well, her. You're Mima. <laughs> Mima's or Sheldon, not Shelter. Um, hey, Sheldon. Where he Superman calls Lois low. Come on, low. And I'm like, Lois is pretty short already. You <laughs> no, care. low. It's not. You don't need to shorten that. Can I call you Ka? Yeah. <laughs> yes, oh, man. I'm pretty short already. <laughs> Have you seen? Yeah. Yes, man. <laughs> uh, I knew where you were going with that. Uh, it's oh, just. I'm like, no. 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 Any other nerdy for you, dude? I think I've got two more. Uh, on nerdy. Give me one. I, I you keep making me lose my train of thought. Um, I really like that they decapitated Steppenwolf. Like 100% love that they decapitated Steppenwolf. And then it goes through the portal and dark side just stomps on his head. I was like, oh yeah. And I love that it was Wonder Woman that did it. Like, she's so sick. If it's Superman would have done it, I'd have been like, meh. But when Wonder Woman did it, I was like, yes. Yeah, <laughs> kind, of a, kind of a killer. <laughs> have you seen the Wonder Woman movie? She'll take out a tower with a German soldier in it and no, no regrets. No regrets at all. No Not PTSD. Not at all. He'll end you. And it was way like I like to like when they shot the arrow out and like she went to go study what that arrow meant. Like it was really just everything else was flushed out. Yeah. Flushed out. Flushed out. Yeah. Uh the nerdy, I, I was gonna save it till the end, but anyways, the epilogue. I loved it. Oh, so sick. It that was, was like a whole movie in that in that zone, in that right one hundred percent. I don't know where they're going. I don't like this dystopian universe they're in, but I just love the Joker and Batman interacting. And I like, will effing kill you. Right? Wait, Batman swears now? Yeah. <laughs> that laugh is horrible, though. Uh, uh, uh. I loved, though, when Superman showed up and everyone's, like, gearing up for it, and Joker just goes <laughs> in the background, just starts laughing. Uh, it, it looks cool. I mean, uh, other than me, uh, I thought they were going to do a Wonder Bad thing there for a minute because they showed Wonder Woman dying, and then when the Joker's like, he's lost someone, and I'm like, no way, they're going to tie. I think it's Jason Todd. Who's oh. the Robin that dies? 
Jason Todd. Is I think it was. I mean, Melissa will correct us on this, but I remember that was like a huge thing. Jason Todd. Yeah, when when the Joker kills Robin. Green, really? Like, oh, it could have been so better. That's one of my really big bads of the DC universe is that Tim Drake or Jason Todd, one of them died off screen, and haha jokes on you. Like, I can't. I hate that they did that. That should have been. That should have happened. It, It on screen. I mean, it could. They they might do if they do like. I don't know what Batman's are gonna do after the, the the Twilight Kids version, but uh, if they do another one with the Bat family, and then that shows him dying, like that wrecked Batman, dude. Like that's when Batman really gets wrecked is losing one of his own. And that's why it's so important. Why did like if you're gonna go for the Frank Miller version of Batman, this hard, mm-hmm. old, grumpy, will freaking kill you. I will effing kill you. Mm-hmm. You're gonna go with that Batman, the one who clocks you in the head with one of these. Right. You have to show the one that shoots with a gun. You have to like the Robin. So you know they might. That epilogue was just like a little teaser, but I did find it interesting when he's like Harley Quinn when she was dying in my arms. All right. Slowly, and I will effing kill you. I'm gonna make complete that promise. That, that was uh yeah. And when Cyborg goes, he found us. That whole thing was just. Mm. And it's funny to see like who survives. Like Mira's more into this than I thought she would be. One of my favorites. I actually like her a lot. Uh, yeah, but Amber Heard. I don't know. What? Just the actress who plays her has some. Sus- she's a suspect. I'll say based on the rumor. She's. Oh uh, yeah, they try to get Khaleesi to my replace her. We'll see, man. I feel like uh, we also hear too about uh, Affleck. He's coming back. Oh no, he's not. I feel like they're just after this success of this. That always changes. Dude, your when your brand is that strong, you're 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 throwing away money if you don't pursue it. Right. So what we'll, we'll see. I'm a optim properly optimistic, however that goes. Hashtag restore the Snyderverse, 100. percent Why not? I mean, you can have separate universes, but just keep them all kind of organized. I mean, not separate universes, separate movies. The DC is is built for separate universes. New 50. Yeah. You can have parallel universes. Yeah, but also they also have like one big contender. We'll see how that goes. Oh man, I thought I had. What did you think about the bat or Superman just wailing on him? <laughs> I think at the very end, because I asked uh, the, my 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 friend Q that I work with, and he told me his favorite scene was the Flash reversing time. And I was like, that's a cool scene. It wasn't my favorite, but I really liked that, and I really liked after. What I end on, but let's talk about this. So Superman shows. Was oh, that one of yours? Sorry. No, that was going to be my nerd. Well, oh yeah, go well, for it. Go for it. Anyway, but when Superman shows up and he, he gets hit in the shoulder and it doesn't even do anything, <laughs> not impressed. And he just wails on him. Like he's just on top of him, ground and pounding. And then stop. Yeah. And then like in the black with his eyes go. Mm. And, sorry, that was that was a terrible description. <laughs> his eyes go. Wah. Wah. That's uh, the, the, the listeners know exactly what you mean. The YouTubers are like, what? Yeah, no, but he. Uh, that was sick, dude. And that's the thing I kind of like. I kind of like seeing a little bit of an uncaged Batman and an uncaged Superman. I don't know. I get that, like, it, it kind of destroys a little bit of the comics, but I still enjoyed it. Why not? Hey man, low is the key. That's all we got to remember. It's, you were right about him. Fear him. Yeah, it's, you know, I, I'm glad to see where it's going. It's heading great. They fight. I mean, we haven't even talked about Dark Side, who we Dark. were all mad about not even showing up in the in the Josipher. I, I love uh I love me some dark side. Just the dude who hates the universe. <laughs> it's not and like I even had him. Uh, Just the man oh, who hates the universe. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, real quick. The opening well not the opening. Um but like the opening was better. Gods, That's what old gods. Yeah what? The, the old god scene where the, it's the old gods fighting dark side, a younger dark side. Oh yeah 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 Ares and Zeus are like hanging out. Yeah Dude, I thought that was sick because it's before Ares and Zeus betray one another or Ares destroys him. Anyway, because Ares is walking up like a total bad, bad bum. I, I, I'm going to limit my swearing for the rest of the cast. Yeah, you better. Hands him the, the axe. I was just like, this is sick. He puts on his war helmet, takes the axe. And then later you see him just come down on dark side with it. So they call it the old gods. The old gods are Zeus, Ares, you know, the, the ones. Yeah, the mythical ones. Uh... The man, men, all of them. Exactly. But what I really liked was a little nerdy too. They showed freaking Granny Goodness, man. The most ridiculous character I've ever seen. 
uh, the old, uh, she's pretty much uh, Dark Side's right hand man, but she's an old lady. Yeah. She's Granny Good Side. Yeah, they I- had like a legitimately like that's that's a that's a grandma you don't want to mess with. Right. And they had just a little cameo of her. Yeah, yeah. she's uh she's got kids on the in the God World right in the comics. They yeah, were- I I knew her a lot from the JLA, the Justice League of America Limited, when she like took over as she had uh, her own enterprise. This is the cartoon. Oh, uh, she had her own little enterprise and no one knew she was bad and they really realized she was from dark side but i was shocked how they were going to do it and they did a they did it really well. i mean they didn't even talk about it that was just for the nerds yeah for the nerds. Granny. For the, All right, what's um, her name again granny what uh good good shine good goodness good. granny goodness yeah i, I know what you're talking about isn't she orion's mother isn't that right orion anyway i know more dc than i know marvel but um i think she is orion's mother anyway Going into it though, uh, last last thing, Flash, stopping time when he. Mm. You want to talk about Hand that? Up. Hand up. Yeah, when he sticks his it. everything, everything goes terrible, and then he starts reversing time. I just that sequence is cool because for a minute it's like, wait, what? Like it's too late. Wah. It's like, how are they going to solve this? And then he mm. puts his hand up and he starts reversing time and. But then the interior monologue to himself where he's like, dad, I was one of the greats. So I was kind of like, eh, it's fine. But when he's just running in the whole sequence, that was cool. That was like, that really, that's something we don't see. We, have we seen anything like that in any other superhero film? Film? No. Well, I mean, not a cool one, but like the eighties, early nineties Superman. I think it was three with uh, Christopher Reeves. He his time for Lois. That does not count. Yeah, he just spins around the backwards access. Kill everyone. That doesn't. It's not, <laughs> it's not the speed force. That's not even remotely physics. <laughs> uh, you see what I've created, Johnny? Could a depressed person make this? Yes, that's no. exactly what a depressed person does. <laughs> Sorry, that's my transition into saying I've I've run out of all my nerdy stuff. So uh, I'll just end it with who we haven't talked about, which I personally like the little Martian Manhunter cameo. I didn't like it really now because his name's john john it's not Mar- he wouldn't go some have called me the martian manhunter it's like no his name's john john that's what he goes by oh he's also the martian manhunter i guess but i don't know well i just like that they put him in there because that's a big uh setup i don't know we'll, would, uh... if aquaman would, was like and some people call me aquaman it's like no he's arthur curry like it's just some people kind of call him Aquaman. They did uh they but, did ruin the only scene I did miss out. Another scene I missed out on is Aquaman trying to be a little cooler when he's like when he first asked about Batman, so he dressed like a bat. Yeah. And then like later on in the 2017 version, he's like, a bat, I dig it. They cut that out completely on this one. And I was just it's just funny to see how much humor Whedon tried to put in a movie that didn't need humor. Right. Yeah, it clearly did not benefit from humor. <laughs> and they cut out that weird like family living in the in the nuclear thing that was so weird yeah just yeah like oh hey speed force huh i can buy superman yeah like it was just that was good but they did a lot of good and i want to buy a black shirt with the white superman logo now i'm glad i do too yeah i'm glad they kept the slow-mo when flash is running at superman and superman's got the three people like oh um, and he looks at him yeah and you see his eyes look at him that's that's probably my favorite scene of the whole movie and it's well just the reaction of barry like yeah his <laughs> eyes are just like oh shoot <laughs> uh oh this isn't no gonna end well yeah no one's ever gone as fast as me like it's just yeah. a great scene anyway that's excited i think that's all i wanted to talk about should we just briefly say that if you want to be in on this giveaway, first off, you got to jump onto our Instagram because that's where we're going to have all the details. Um, so thank you for making it to the end of the podcast. Jump onto our Instagram. We will have all the details on how to win a Batman versus Superman battering. We also have other mini batterings. Maybe we'll give away a few of these, right, Johnny? Mm-hmm. 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 The details on how to win. That's- yep, and it's at we're at deadlight nerds you can find us on everything literally just google at deadlight nerds we're up there we're up we're the first thing you see we're the first two pages of google there's nothing else nothing else we're up a thousand percent yeah all right nerds like and subscribe i guess that's what the the youtubers say please do because we need fans because we don't have what is it we need fans we need we need fans 
actually no we do need fans because we're hoping to we're hoping to have fans going <laughs> that was that don't don't edit that out we really do need fans we're we're uh we're, we're 3d printing batterings for crying out loud come on <laughs> all right knights we will see you on the flippity flop flippity flip <laughs>